Hey y'all, welcome back and welcome to my first ever home DIY. Here is a before of our lovely green countertops. I don't know what they are. I would imagine that they are just laminate or something similar. Um, but yeah, there you go. Old school looking countertops. And I'm going to start by sanding it down. And I did do the sander, but learned that it didn't do too much, honestly. I ended up just taking the sandpaper and really scratching everything up. I just wanted everything to be scratched up and make sure all the dirt and everything gets off and so something the concrete can have something to cling to. Um, I've watched a lot of tutorials about these countertops before I did them and I would suggest that you do the same if you're interested, see how different, you know, different tutorials do things. Um, this worked the best for us and I just kind of scratch it every sort of way that I could. Make sure it's nice and scratched up. Now our countertops here obviously were very inexpensive so I was not worried about the concrete. If you have very nice countertops, I don't know if this one would be the best because it's concrete. It's staying on there. But this was a very inexpensive project. It did take a lot of time, especially since we have two babies. Um, and they were sick at the time, so it kind of just made it drag on. But it probably would have taken about four days, I think. Um, I'm wiping it down with alcohol, make sure all the dust is off and it's super clean. Fingers crossed, because here comes the concrete. I'm using Henry's Feather Finish, and I'll link everything I use down below, some trials, some tools, and of course, a baby break. Hi! Did you have a good nap? Hi, baby. You have a good nap. I missed you. Bless you. Do you want up? Up? Up. <laughs> hi, say hi. Skin a marink a dink a dink, skin a marink a do. I love you. <laughs> I just had to put a little bit of the baby in, one of our babies, if you needed a little lightning to your day. But here we go, starting with the concrete. So Henry's Feather Finish. I know there's another brand, which I'll also link down below, but we just used this brand because it was the most easily accessible for us. Um, all right, this is where I think tutorials are more accurate than the box. So the box says to mix the concrete, two parts concrete to one part water, which is what I did the first two layers. And no, don't do that. I don't want to tell you to go against the instructions, but go against the instructions. Every tutorial I've watched has used one part concrete to one part water and the last two layers that's what we did and it was so much easier with this consistency it was like working with clay I couldn't really get it thin enough the trowel that I'm using here had a notch taken out of the end which I didn't know so it kept leaving deep marks through it this layer was so annoying I ended up just smearing it on with my hands which was so much easier than the tools I had at the time. Later on we realized that we needed a bigger trowel, something that would help spread it more evenly and that the one part to one part was just the way to go. See those big marks? See I just this was not the funnest layer but I knew it was the first layer so and it would be sanded down anyway um, I tried even using a cake decorating tool because that's what I had on hand it this layer was just it was a practice layer now we are have already done a backsplash in our kitchen so we did not tape our walls um, and we also removed a little lip at the back of our countertops um, but if you do have nice walls nice background backdrop I would absolutely tape up your wall we should I, we should have taped up our wall anyway because we had to end up scraping some off before we put the backdrop on back yeah back what it backsplash on so I would suggest that and we did um, we did tape off our sink so this is after the first layer all the marks in it just drove me nuts because I did not have great tools 
So, but anyway, here it is dry and Jake um, is sanding it with a sander, which did really work well when the coats were dry. And one thing I would say, um, of course you can always sand it, but if you get it as smooth as possible as it's going on, you will have less to sand, which means less dust. And there, the sander did take a little, some little notches out, and I wanted to show y'all that. So, but it's okay, because you're putting layers and layers and layers. And that's where the trial was making those big lines. And I did want to say, if you have like, asthma or kids or anything like that, like we do, um, our kids weren't home when we sanded it at the time, so... I, the rest of the time, we did use a shop vac to help suck up all the dust, and it was so, it was so helpful for that, because I have asthma, and I have small kids, and I don't want all that dust everywhere. The shop vac was wonderful. So this is actually the third layer going on, and I did the second layer. I didn't record that, because it was so much of the same, and this, we're still working with the two, the Two parts concrete, one part water, um, and Jake is doing this layer, and I think at the end of this layer, he finally realizes that the one part to one part is the way to go. Right here, he's still doing two parts to one part. And before this layer, he went out and got a big trial like that, and he's showing you there that you don't want to use it with any dried concrete. You don't want to use any of your tools with dry concrete that concrete that has dried onto this tool because it will not allow for a smooth surface. But this trowel was awesome. It was big, it was perfect, no no weird chunks taken out of it. It did a really good job. And for this project, I don't think you need very many tools in all honesty. You need a big bucket that you can mix your concrete in. You need something to stir it with. We just got those paint stirrers. And you need, you know, your, your smoothing tools, whatever that may be. You need some sandpaper. If you want to do it by hand, I think you could do the whole thing by hand. If you have a hand sander, that's great too. If you have a hand sander that you can hook up to your shop back that's even better um and now he's that's where we left where we did not tape off the back so he's gotta scrape some off there another thing i wanted to mention was if you have any place like that where you feel like you have messed up you've got some concrete there um you need to try and scrape it off before it fully dries same with the painter's tape especially around our sink um, it was easier to peel that up after a layer was on, set for a little bit, and did not fully dry because it was hard to get it off once it was concreted to the sink. And here we are doing the one, to one part to one part ratio, and it is spreading like butter. It is so much easier. If you take anything away from this tutorial, please don't follow the box instructions for this. It was just too hard it dried too fast it was too hard to work with this made it so much easier and here he did remove the sink for this I think this is the last layer going on as for the layers we let them dry you know overnight sometimes 12 hours like it dried fairly quickly so you know, we would let it dry, sand it, and then the next layer. It, re it really didn't take that long to dry or to set up. Here is a view of everything dried and sanded before I'm putting our sealers on. And I'm just wiping everything down here. And this sealer is the impregnator sealer. It's a tiny bottle, but I don't even think I used a fourth of it. And I did like four layers of this stuff. This is the sealer. Please do not skip this sealer. This is the one that goes down into the concrete. The concrete kind of soaks it down. I'm sorry, this is blurry. It'll fix. Um, but it soaks it in and it's supposed to help prevent 
things from spilling and soaking down into the concrete. Um, this is very, very important. It's only like, I want to say 15 bucks or so for that and well worth it because it, we still have, you know, three fourths of a bottle of that stuff and I did so many layers. Now, and I just used a white cloth for that. And now I'm going on with our top coat um, with a paintbrush. You, I'm not going to tell you what top coat I used because it is technically not food safe, but most of the tables any of us have ever eaten off of in our life were not sealed with food grade sealer. So I'm telling you to use the food grade sealer. I did not. Do some research, find out what you think. And here is a little run through of what our countertops look like. I absolutely love the way they turned out. Um, I don't think I could have asked for any better, especially for the price. It was under a hundred bucks. And I will link as much as I possibly can of what we used to my Amazon. And I am an Amazon affiliate just for full clarity, but I just love it. And I hope that you try it. If you do, let me know. Send me pictures. Um, I love the way it's so, I don't know, it's just very, or I don't know, artistic. It's like not perfect, but you know, it's got that farmhouse vibe. Oh, and we are doing a backsplash. As you see, we still have some to do, some nails to fill in and all that jazz, but we're coming along over here. Now I'm just going to show you a few stills and I hope y'all enjoy this and I'll try to put as much information in the description as possible. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll talk to y'all next time.